Welcome to my store. This here is Brian from Reef Crew, your source for live marine food, and uh, he's here to explain his products and how to work them. Okay? Okay. Thank you, girl. Um, my name is uh, Brian Berger. I'm the president uh, of uh, Bionomic Solutions. Uh, the brand name uh, that we offer is Reef Crew, and we specialize in saltwater foods. Um, today, I'm going to run through a couple of really basic, simple how to uh, to get algae cultures going, how to get rotor cultures going. Uh, maybe answer a couple of questions that, uh, uh, that that come up uh, throughout, because these are the things that typically we get asked when we get uh, out into local aquarium clubs or into uh, large theaters for uh, presentations. So, I'm going to start with the how to take your standard algae disc. Um, we import them from Florida Aqua Farms, uh, so they are readily available through us in Canada or directly through Florida Aqua Farms uh, in the States. Um, and we're going to start with the, the basic disc. I'm going to go through how to add the fertilizer to it um, and get the culture up and running to the point where you can start growing your own phytoplankton at home. Uh, this particular uh, species is the Nanoclapsus uh, oculata. Um, it's probably one of the most robust um, algae strains uh, that we use in uh, the saltwater industry. We've got, uh, it, it'll survive quite well in fresh water, it'll also... Is it supposed to be having the numbers going? Because it has the red light, but I don't know if it's working. Yeah. The numbers are supposed to be going? Yeah. Oh. I pressed the button. Is it going? Oh yeah, no, you're working, you're fine. Oh. I oh yeah, no, I don't, I, don't, I don't have my, uh, no, that's... Uh, I don't, I don't it's, it's a, a time lapse, so if I had a dedicated sound and a, and a, and a video, then uh, I, can, I, I, I can sing yeah. it, but I don't have my... It, Okay. Um, all right. So this is the Nanocrossus oculata, one of the uh, most robust or more robust strains that we use in the saltwater industry. Um, it uh, acclimates quite well to fresh water as well as salt water. Um, most, I think, what people use it the most for is for rotor for feeds. Um, it grows really well, really fast, um, and it pretty much outgrows the other strains of, uh, of algae out there. So even if you end up with a cross-contamination, you're still going to end up nine times out of ten with a nano-dominant uh, yeah, species, which which is good. Uh, because what's, it, what's it's nutritional like? It's it's high in the uh, uh, the UH the UHS. Hoof, hoof, the hoofas. I don't um, know what the hoof stands yeah. for, but fatty acids yes. is it's the a, last part. Yes, um, the the brown algae are your DHAs. Um, your brain builders, that sort of thing. So, depending on how you want to uh, nutritionally build things, um, you're looking at more of the green. Green gives you your growth. Um, it's not a complete uh, nutritional, and then you supplement with the brown algae or uh, in some cases yeasts to, uh, to to bump up the other side of your nutritional profiles. What does Celcon do in that case? Your Celcon, you know, honestly, I'm not. Because I was uh, on the online and uh, you know I got the baby bomb guys mm -hmm. upstairs and they were saying to take the brine shrimp, the baby brine shrimp, soak them in Celcon before you feed them to them because baby brine shrimp when they're first born and there's nothing in their belly, they don't have the right fatty acids. Yep. So the miners say Celcon is, is sort of like an oily, more oil may be not the, the, the right word, but it's uh, it sticks to the uh, the brine shrimp itself. Yeah. Um, so it's they nutritionally profiled the cell con, um, and then as it sticks to the uh, the baby brine, that's where you're getting your your, your balanced nutrition. So you've got the cell con plus the uh, the gut load or the initial brine shrimp. If you fed cell con to rotifers, would there be an advantage? I or is the algae the pretty al much covered? The, al the algae will, will pretty much cover it. Uh, the, it by itself, the, the nano uh, is by far the, the best. You can get into certain make the blends of the nano and the Tetrasalmus, okay. um, and then if you specifically want that DHA, then you can get into the uh, isoprisis uh, for the DHA, DHA uh, blends. Okay. okay. Right, so somebody in the back? No. Oh, okay. right, so the dog. Dog. Okay. If somebody opens the door, we got the door over okay. the bell. Well, there are ding ding. Right. So I'm just going to start opening the, uh, the disc. All right. He is natural right here. Okay. So, so far to this point, I'm using bare hands. The, one of the, the, the critical things with uh, phytoplankton is uh, cleanliness um, for cross-contamination. As, as much as they are robust, um, it's really difficult to troubleshoot 
what environmental factors are involved as to why something doesn't grow. Uh, it could be you've got the culture going too close to your existing saltwater tank. You could be a smoker. I've dealt with trying to troubleshoot things. Smoking and kills them? So much different. Who knows what's in the in the smoke? Yeah. Uh, and just the environmental, you're pumping ambient air through the culture, and it, it has had effects in the past.